All right, folks, now that we have our short block done, we're gonna go ahead and start setting up the valve train. Um, with our trick flow heads here, the 220 turbo heads, uh, we're gonna need something a little longer than your average 7400 push rod. The reason for that is we are gonna be bolting on a nice brand new shiny set of Harlan Sharp roller rockers. Uh, very, very strong standard ratio, uh, but that's what it's gonna take uh, to really make this thing live on the street like we want it to. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and unbox the rockers and just set up a couple and show you the steps of putting the cam on the base circle, on the intake and the exhaust, and what it takes to go and get your measurement. All right, we wanted to talk a little bit about our cylinder heads of choice today. These are some TFS Fast S-Cast 220cc intake runner cathedral ports. Uh, we chose them for a wide variety of reasons. First, they're chock full of really great parts. They've got a great spring pack in it. Uh, they got some 2.040 stainless valves. Uh, they've got a CNC profiled uh, combustion chamber along with the transition going down into the bowl. Uh, most importantly here, this thing is gonna be making a lot of torque. And for that, you need something with a really nice thick deck. The decks on these are actually three quarter of an inch thick, so head gasket retention is not gonna be a problem. Uh, just great parts and you're gonna love them. Okay, the first step that we're gonna do to you know, figure out what kind of push rods uh, we're gonna put in this thing is to measure using our ComCam's push rod link checker, um, just for your, your ability to see what we're doing here and get some nice detailed shots of it. Uh, we're gonna use the intake valve on cylinder number two. Um, and it basically starts off with trying to find base circle. You can go ahead and get this thing loaded like that. Make sure it's sitting there on the lifter, it is. So we're turning the crankshaft right now. And as we do that, it's turning the camshaft because it's connected with the timing chain. And then that is actually pushing the lifters up and their lifter bores. And that is what is gonna push our push rod up. Give it a few more cranks just to make sure it's on the base circle. And now we can grab our rockers and start fitting them. Okay, we know that our push rods are gonna be a minimum 7400 long and probably more likely something around 7500. So just to kind of get it to a, a, basically a starting point, we're going to just go ahead and expand it out. So we hit roughly 7400. All right, it's pretty close. Now, with that, this tool is pretty good, but what we're gonna do just so it doesn't have a tendency to twist around is we're gonna take a little bit of tape and wrap it. And then we're gonna cut it. And as we go through the, uh, the rotations there, we'll reapply that tape. It doesn't have to be you know, really stuck on or anything like that, but it'll make things nice and quick. Okay, we're very, very close now. You can just feel like the various very smallest amount of lash in there. Uh, I think that the next turn of the push rod there is going to be exactly what it needs to hit the zero mark. It's going to go very, very slightly, maybe just that much. Okay, yeah, just that small little turn there was enough to make it so it is effectively at zero right now. Okay, with all the lash taken out of the system right now, uh, we know that our push rod is, is exactly where it needs to be. We're gonna pull the rocker, pull the push rod out, and I'm gonna show you how to measure that push rod. And then from there to figure out how much more preload we wanna have in the lifter, uh, what that step looks like. Okay, we're gonna measure what our push rod length is right now. Uh, you see that I've kind of got it, it's not parallel with the back of it. I'm going to go ahead and just lightly flex it, watch that number grow. It keeps going and going and going. And the shred length is 7.404 inches. That doesn't mean you buy 7.400 push rods. You'd actually add 70 thousandths to that number. So. You just take off 7.404 plus 0.070 and that gives us 7.474. Let's call it 7.475. That's a very common uh, common push rod length and uh, we'll get some of those on the way from our store.
And here we have our rockers. Everything is buttoning up really nice. Heads have been torqued down. Uh, at this point, we're gonna be running the front mount cam sensor on the front timing cover. So we've got the ICT billet rear cam sensor plug going on right now at this point. Torque it down like we do everything. Our valve covers will work with 750 lift camshaft using stock style rocker arms, and they fit all ignition coils with 72 millimeter spacing. Next up, getting very, very close now with our long block. Got the valve covers going on from Holly. Now these valve covers normally reuse the factory gaskets and bolts, but since we're building our block from scratch, we've picked a set of our very own valve cover gaskets. Gonna be installing the hardware through the back. This is really nice stuff because once it's together, it never comes apart. Easy to take together and put it apart without losing parts inside of the engine. And finding home the first time with the valve cover is always a little bit fun, but once you get the bolts in, going down and tightening them all down, torquing them down, is all very, very smooth. The coils we chose are Summit high output ignition coils. They mount right in the stock location with no special accommodations needed. And that makes the right choice for Project 1000 with their lower primary resistance, higher RPM capability, and greater output than stock replacement coils. We'll be hooking these coils up to a set of Summit Racing ceramic ignition wires. These 8mm spiral core silicone wires will ensure the maximum energy gets from the coils to the spark plugs. So we've got our valve covers in place, our long block is all buttoned up. It's gonna be staying like that for a long, long time. Uh, next thing that we're gonna do is end up taking our Summit uh, sheet metal intake manifold to it, putting that thing on. With 408 cubic inches, torque was never gonna be the problem, and we wanted this engine to fit in the tightest of engine bays. We chose our low profile Summit Racing fabricated intake manifold. It's the perfect match for our Cathedral Port TFS 220s. It accommodates different throttle bodies and injector links, and with metal construction, high boost is not an issue. We'll use a common Holley engine management system with 1,000cc Detroix injectors to feed our beast. All right, I am in Dyna Cell 1. It's actually one of two over here at TrickFlow. They happen to have an LS7 here on the Dyna, which is closely related to ours. What's cool about that is, is they're going to be running the same engine management system that we're going to use on Project 1000 when we put it into the car. They use a dominator system, which does all your fuel, ignition, boost. I mean, it does everything, including a lot of data logging. So it's an awesome system to have, and they use it all day long here. The other cool thing is, is once we get this engine out and our engine back on the pump, when we decide to map this thing, we're actually gonna be able to take the map that we have from the dyno and load it directly into the ECU that we actually put in the car. So it's gonna make tuning it in the car just that much easier. All right, we wanted to talk a little bit about why we chose the turbos that we did. We've got some VS Racing 6762s. They are with a 408 cubic inch engine. Uh, they are gonna be on full boil at 3,500 RPM and we're expecting over 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, and in terms of the horsepower goal, uh, we expect it's gonna take about 25 PSI to hit our 1,200 number. Uh, everything else is you know, just sized to fit exactly. We've got some uh, VS Racing blow-off valves, some Summit prototype wastegates, um, everything's nicely plumbed uh, with our AN lines and we've got an ICT billet front cover uh, for the oil drain backs and it's just a, it's a nice compact setup that's going to fit in about any engine bay that we chose to. So with that we'll go ahead and get this thing over on the dyno and let it rip. So we've had the engine up and running a little bit here and we want to check, like, like any good engine builder, check the fluids out, make sure you got everything where it should be, checking the plugs out, making sure you're hitting on all eight. Uh, everything, it was leak free, just no issue whatsoever. Here you can see the engine with a bunch of wiring on it, and a lot of that is sensors. Checking out the oil pressure and such, everything is very, very happy, starting to lean into it. Love watching these pipes get hot for the first time. Oh, 
awesome. This engine is just so well behaved, I'll let you listen to the idle. Here's one of our preliminary pulls. And here's our final run. Uh, it certainly has more left in it, but this was at 25 pounds of boost with about 14 degrees of timing, pretty light. It hit about 1,202 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and about 1,100 foot-pounds of torque down at about 4,600 RPM. Just a really great street engine. Project 1000's been a ton of fun and I just love what the team here has done. There you have it, folks. An easy 1,200 horsepower motor with over 1,000 foot-pounds of torque with inexpensive and off-the-shelf parts straight out of our Summit Racing catalog. An easy recipe that'll blow the tires off of anything. The only question is, what engine bay is the right home for our Project 1000 LS? And do we want to wick it up with bigger turbos to take full advantage of our super tough Pro LS parts? You'll have to stay tuned and keep your eyes and ears open to see what Project 1000 does out in the wild. And thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more great content.